React.js is one of the most popular JavaScript libraries, but it's not something we often use in a no-coding platform. But today, I wanted to see if I can combine EditorX with React.js. Let's begin. Here is the React website. I've just headed over to the Getting Started section, and I've gone to Add React to a Website. Now, the traditional way to do this is to add an ID with a div, and then we can create this DOM with some scripts. We import the React packages from CDN, and then we import a like underscore button.js. But this really is just some code. I'm gonna put this in manually in a no coding platform. And this time I'm gonna be using Editor X. I'll start by adding a new element to the page. I'm going to head over to the embeds and socials, and here we can add in embedded code. Now this also works as adding in custom code for us inside of Editor X, which means that we can start putting in our React code just over here. I'll start by pulling in the CDN packages. These will prepare React to work. So these can be found just over here. There is a script tag here to call the like button.js, but we won't be doing that. We'll just place the code directly in the script tag. This all works when we load up a div with the ID of like button. So I'm gonna place this at the top of the code here. And I'm also gonna remove all the comments because I don't really need those at this point in time. The next part here is to copy over the initialization code, which actually queries the DOM for that specific like button and then loads the React code. The React code is just located over here. So what I'm gonna do is load that initiator at the very end and then load this React code in to run just before it. This is pretty default and here we're loading a like button. As soon as we hit save on this custom code, we should see it update and the like button has appeared just over here. We can now publish the site to see what this will actually look like once it's live. I've done this already and I'm going to view it. Here's our like button, I'll select it and it updates the DOM with you've liked this, which means our React code is working. That's just the beginning. Now that we've got React up and running, let's see if we can import some custom libraries into our Editor X no coding platform, things that we wouldn't even begin to imagine that we could do, such as Bootstrap. So I'll start by heading over to Google and searching up React Bootstrap. We'll go to the official website here that lets us run it and we'll go to the getting started guide. Here we can pull it into a normal project or we can call it by CDN, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to call over the JavaScript code that we have here and I'm gonna prepare a button as a component. I'll start from scratch here. So here I'll pull in the CDN. Here I'll relabel this alert to a button component, which we'll use shortly. I'll also need some styling. So I'll head over to the style sheets here. I'll pull in this CSS that we have and we'll place this near the top of our code so it loads early on. With that done, all I need is to pull in React once more, but this time I want to use JSX. This will allow us to create components much easier using the JSS syntax. Now there's an example of this on the React website. So I'm going to copy that across. It comes with Babel, which will convert our code into something more readable for the browser. And I'll place these near the top of our code segment. Finally, we'll import the actual script itself here along with the div for the root ID. And here we'll be able to customize this once it's inside of our embedded code. I'm gonna place this here at the very bottom of the code segment. This comes with a hello world and it's a H1 element. I'm gonna relabel this to the bootstrap button component that we created just earlier above here. And I'm going to update this text to say that this is bootstrap running inside of Editor X, which sounds pretty cool. Let's have a look. There, we even have a preview of it. So it means that it's working already in the live editor, which is also pretty awesome. Let's see if I can actually customize this and add a few buttons here inside of a nested div. So I'll create a div here, and this is how I would normally code inside of, say, VS Code, but I'm doing this directly inside of Editor X. We'll do a variation button here. So this will be a button with a variant color of green, and we can simply paste this code in, or we could even add in the attribute. And we can see both buttons now exist. There's not much space between them, so let me just add a colon here, and so that we can have a little bit of a buffer, and I can publish this site, I can now view it, and we have Bootstrap successfully running inside of Editor X. 
There are also some pretty cool things we can now do with this React component inside of EditorX. We can resize the window and it'll adapt accordingly to how we've done the padding as well as margins. Of course, if you make it too small, you might get a scroll bar. We can move it around and dock it in different positions, even as a menu item at the very top of the screen. And yes, we can copy paste it and move it in other areas too, such as into the footer. And this makes sense. We can then publish the site and it is all working according to plan. And this is pretty much it. The sky's the limit here. You can embed any type of React code using this process. Say you want some Tailwind CSS in there, or maybe some three-dimensional charts using Chart.js. It's really up to you. I might look at more complex examples in the future, but let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, hit like and subscribe. Thanks.